Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again, and I want to welcome everyone back to another movie review. And today I'm going to be reviewing Enter the Ninja, which is the uh, one of the first American Ninja movies. Um, one of the first, and by that I mean movies that were put out by American film companies about ninjas. Um, not, you know, the Michael Dudikoff movies, which I already reviewed uh, all those. They are up on my channel. Um, made by the same company, though. This is made by uh, the Canon Film Company, who would later do the American Ninja Saga. Um, but this is one of the first uh, ninja movies, you know, made by an American film company that kind of sparked the whole ninja mania of the 80s. Um, not the first one to come out, um, and not the first movie to deal with ninjas. Of course, you know, the James Bond movie, You Only Live Twice, dealt with ninjas. Um, you know, there was other movies that were made, but this one helped kickstart the, uh, the ninja mania of the 80s. This and the octagon with Chuck Norris was uh, another one of the the first ones to, you know, start off the uh, kind of the obsession with uh, ninja movies. And this is a fun movie, even after all these years, even uh, almost 40 years later, which is hard to believe. Excuse me. Um, Enter the Ninja is still a very fun film. I think it holds up. Um, you know, this would spawn, uh, two more movies to make a trilogy. It's not my favorite of the trilogy, but it's still a, a very fun movie that I still enjoy to this day. Um, but like I said, you know, this movie kicked off the kind of, you know, helped kick off the ninja mania, you know, of the 80s, which led to the two sequels, which led to, you know, a couple years after this. If I could hold on to it, um, led to American Ninja, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and all kinds of stuff. You know, all kinds of uh, ninja-related movies and TV shows, and then you know, video games and all kinds of uh, ninja stuff in the '80s. You know, that's one of the things that, in terms of like martial arts movies, was really big in the '80s. And of course, there were, you know, uh, hundreds of you know, really crappy, you know, the Godfrey Ho movies, the the Z grade films and all that. So yeah, you know, it was a it was a big deal in the eighties and even the early nineties, the, the ninja stuff. You know, people were obsessed with ninjas. Like people wanted to train to become ninjas and, and all that kind of stuff, you know. But you know, this movie helped pave the way for it. So yeah, but again, I still think this movie holds up I know a lot of people will say that it's cheesy and it's corny and it's, uh, you know, all this other stuff, which I don't really like to use those words, you know, I think they're overrated in my opinion, but, you know, I still think the movie's fun, you know, I remember watching it as a kid, um, it was on UPN back in the day, I remember one night, it was like the movie of the week or whatever. And I remember distinctly the first, like, 20 minutes of the movie where the credits is, uh, you know, a ninja practicing him, his moves and everything, which is uh, Shokasugi, you know, who would go on to be in the sequels and, you know, a couple other ninja movies throughout the 80s. And then he tried to branch out and do, you know, some martial arts action films and it really didn't work out, you know, by the end of the 80s he had kind of come and gone and and that was it which is unfortunate because i do think he was talented and i still think these movies hold up that he made but you know i guess the times changed and you know he didn't get you know that opportunity to change with it but anyway the opening credits you see this ninja working out and dressed in black and then at the very end this white ninja jumps in and then like for the next 15 minutes is like this big, you know, action scene where this white ninja, you know, fights these other ninjas. There's one, you know, black ninja, and then the rest are dressed in red, and he's fighting these guys off, and then you find out it was just, 
you know, a training exercise. It was part of, you know, his, his training, and now he has become a ninja. You know, and that really, that scene really stuck out to me as a kid, and I always remembered, um, you know, that scene, and I could never, because again, this was the days before digital cable, YouTube, internet, all this kind of stuff. You know, this was back in the day when, you know, really you had your video stores, some magazines, and kind of word of mouth to, you know, find out what movies were and, and what different movies were out there and that kind of thing. Um, and for years, I just remembered this scene from this movie, and I never knew what movie it was. And then a couple of years, maybe, yeah, a few years later, um, this movie came on, uh, I think it was Showtime or HBO or something. I th think it was Showtime. And, you know, this is, this, at this time was when, like, the Internet Movie Database and, and that kind of stuff was really big. So, you know, I had heard about this movie being made by the Canon Film Company, and, you know, I liked their movies. You know, they did the Chuck Norris movies and the Charles Bronson movies and, you know, Bloodsport and all these other movies I enjoyed. So I was kind of just looking through their filmography and I had heard about, you know, the Ninja Trilogy, this being the first one. And, you know, the movie, I saw it was coming on. I'm like, okay, I've, I've heard of this movie. I don't know anything about it. And as soon as I started watching it, this scene plays. And I'm like, oh, this is the movie. You know, this is the movie. I remember watching this as a kid with, I think, I remember my cousin was there. And, you know, I remember we were watching this at my grandparents' house. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's, that's the movie. This is the movie. Cool. You know, awesome. And watched it and enjoyed it. And then... It came on, I don't know if it was later that day or later, you know, sometime later, but I actually taped it, and I still have that blank tape, you know, with with Enter the Ninja on there, so, yeah, so I was like, cool, and for years, this, the, the reason, one of the reasons why I also taped that was because this movie, this is the first modern format that this movie got a release on. Um, it was only available for a long time in America on VHS. You could only get Enter the Ninja on VHS, which I do have, um, I think the later release. Yeah, I have the later release. I found it somewhere um, on VHS. But that's what I used to do back in the day um, when I was really into uh, taping, you know, making VHS tapes. I would just take old blank tapes that we weren't using or I would, I would buy some because they were cheap. And I would tape movies that were not on DVD or if I really liked the movie and I didn't own it, you know, I would tape it. So, yeah, I really, really got into making tapes back in the day. But, of course, like an idiot, I threw most of them away or got rid of them. Some stupid, but, you know, it is what it is. I wish I kept most of those. You know, maybe one day. I don't know. But I still have this one. And I think also also on that tape is Death Wish 3 is on there. Um, Judge Dredd. I th no, Judge Dredd's on I have Judge Dredd on a different tape. It's uh, Death Wish 3, Enter the Ninja, Interceptor Force 2 with Olivier Grunner, and most of Dazed and Confused. I think I ran out of tape and I didn't realize it of Dazed and Confused. But yeah, I still have that tape in storage somewhere. Um, like I said, most of them... I was just fucking stupid, and I threw them away. You know, I really wish I kept those. Um, but luckily, the movies that I taped, most of them were either from, like, HBO or from TV, but they didn't have commercials, so, you know, not a big deal. But, like, when I used to record episodes of Power Rangers, I wish I still had those, because some of those had commercials on them. But for some stupid reason, I threw them out, you know. If only I could go back in time, right? But yeah, this is this Blu-ray is the first release of Enter the Ninja, except the VHS in America. I know overseas it got a DVD and everything, and um, you know at the time I didn't have a player, a, a region-free player, so um, I actually downloaded it and made my own DVD. But yeah, this is the first actual release of the Blu-ray because now that I m mentioned it. Um, they did, MGM put out an on-demand DVD of this, and I really, I was like, for a movie like Enter the Ninja that I, I do like quite a bit, 
I don't want to do that. So I made my own. And then luckily it got a Blu-ray release, which I was very surprised. Now the only thing is, there is no features whatsoever on this Blu-ray. No trailers, no nothing. There's, It's literally just the movie. Um, which does suck. I do wish that, you know, they would have got some interviews and, and stuff. Because I have Pray for Death. And Pray for Death has an interview with Sho Kasugi. So it's not like he doesn't want to talk about these movies. Maybe Kino Lorber, who put this out, just got lazy and didn't want to ask him. Um, but I will admit, Kino Lorber has put out quite a bit of the canon movies and a lot of those you know, low-budget 80s action movies and stuff that I do like. They put a lot out on Blu-ray, which makes me very happy. You know, and then they also put out uh, Revenge of the Ninja, which I'll review next. But yeah, so for years, you know, for a couple of years... Um, I would watch that VHS tape that had, you know, Enter the Ninja on it. And then I found the actual VHS tape somewhere. Like I said, I, I do have it still. Um, I, I'm going to keep it. You know, I do really like this movie. I think it's a lot of fun, you know. Um, but, yeah, you know, for years, that's what I would go to. But, but, yeah, I know I'm like, you know, almost 11 and a half minutes into it, but... It's just, I, I fun. I, I really like this movie. And I don't, you know, it really bugs me like when people say, oh, it's cheesy and it's corny and it's, it, you know, it's it's a it's a B movie. It's bad. You know, no, I think this movie is very fun. Um, you know, not the best one in the series. I think Revenge of the Ninja was the best one. Um, but this is still fun. You know, I still enjoy this movie quite a bit. Um, in terms of the story... Um, you know, Franco Nero is in the movie who was the original Django. Um, and they dubbed his voice in this movie, which I thought was really weird when I first, you know, when I saw it again, because Franco Nero is the bad, one of the bad guys from Die Hard 2, and he uses his actual voice. And then I saw this, and I'm like, wait a minute, that's the guy from Die Hard 2. Why is... Does it not sound like him? And then I was like, oh, they dubbed his voice. And then um, in the Canon Films documentary, Electric Boogaloo, they interview him. And he was talking about it. He's like, you know, they wanted me to be from Texas. I said, I'm not from Texas. Like, I can't, you know, I'm Italian. What do I know about Texas and every, you know. So he's like, so they dubbed my voice, <laughs> you know. Um and he also did not have any martial arts experience when he did this movie. Um, so most of the most of the stuff when he's in the costume is not him. It's actually Mike Stone who wrote the story for this movie. Um, Mike Stone, for those that don't know, was a pretty big martial arts guy back in the day. He was one of the top uh, competitors. He was one of the top fighters back in the day. Um, he actually trained Elvis for a little bit and Elvis's wife Priscilla he actually had an affair with Priscilla uh, for a couple of years and the only reason why they broke it off is because he went to the public with it and it got Priscilla upset so yeah but he was good friends with Chuck Norris and he trained with Bruce Lee and all these other guys back in the day and he wrote the story for this movie he wanted to star in it but Cannon said no because he wasn't an actor he had no acting experience um, but he actually did, uh, most of the ninja stuff for Franco Nero in this movie. And also he played the bad ninja in American Ninja 2. And he was the fight coordinator for the American Ninja films. He trained Michael Dudikoff because Michael Dudikoff had no martial arts experience in the first movie, the first American Ninja. I think by the time he did the second movie... I think he was about to test for his black belt, or he had just gotten his black belt. I'm not sure. Um, but, yeah. So, yeah, that's kind of the story behind that, you know. But, anyway, so Franco Nero plays this American, um, again, they dub his voice, named Cole, who is a, he was in the military, he was a soldier, and then he became, you know, kind of a freelancer, kind of a mercenary. And he goes to Japan to train to become a ninja. And then, like I said, at the beginning of the movie, you know, the movie opens up with this really, even now, like I just watched it, you know, the other, uh, last week I watched this movie. And, 
you know, still, all these years later, and, and not having seen this movie in quite a while, the first, like, 20 minutes is still very impressive to me. I still think it's a really well-filmed sequence. I think the action's pretty cool. You know, I like when he's fighting all the different ninjas. Um, again, you know, almost 40 years later, I still think this movie holds up. So he becomes a ninja, he leaves the temple, and he goes to the Philippines to visit a friend of his who he was in the military with who has a farm. And there's the, the bad guys are trying to get the land because there's oil on the land and his buddy doesn't want to sell. And, you know, his buddy is, is married to this woman who's not, you know, they're not happy with each other. And, you know, the bad guys keep pushing him and pushing him. So Cole gets involved, and they kidnap his wife at one point, and they threaten him and everything, and they're still not budging. So finally, they find out that Cole is a ninja, and they hire, you know, the guy that trained with him, Shokasugi, to take him out. So Shokasugi comes in, you know, he wipes out the farm, he kills his buddy. So, you know, Franco Nero has no other choice but to... Damn, papers, there we go, keep flying around in here. Um, got the fan on because it's hot, but, you know, Franco Nero has no choice but to use his ninja skills to save the guy's wife and get, you know, revenge on these guys, which he does, you know. But that's it. I mean, it's a very, you know, it's a very basic, simple story, which is still, you know, again, after all these years, I still think really works for this movie. And I just, I would love to get, the poster because I just think that you know it's very 80s but I think the artwork you know is still very cool to look at you know it's very you know with all these same with you know Revenge of the Ninja that's really cool and then Ninja 3 this is the the new blu-ray cover but it also has you know the original that was the original poster you know pretty cool which you know of course we will get to uh, these movies shortly but you know, of course, before we talk about the sequels, we have to talk about the original. Um, but still, you know, I think the artwork is still really cool, you know, after all this time, you know. But yeah, you know, the movie I think is, you know, it's it's low budget. It's a canon film, but, you know, I think they, you know, they used it to their advantage. The, the whole movie, with the exception of the beginning, was shot in the Philippines. I like the location. Uh, the beginning was shot in Japan. I like that. You know, I think the action's good. I think the fights are nice. Um, most of the fights, though, is not, you know, ninja stuff. It's just, you know, hand-to-hand -hand basic stuff. There's some, some cool scenes. There's one where, um, you know, the bad guys hot, like hire, like, 50 dudes to, you know, to, like, you know, terrorize the farm and everything. So Cole... Like, fights all these dudes off, and then his buddy gets involved in everything. Um, you know, Cole just fighting these, you know, guys. There, But, but there's parts of the movie where he does use his ninja skills. Like, you know, there's a, a sequence at night where he sneaks up on the bad guys, and he takes all their guns and everything. So that was pretty cool, you know. And then the beginning was, honestly, the beginning was my favorite part. You know, you get the credits of Shokasugi, you know, he's got, like, nunchucks and size and a bow and arrow like he's going through all the different weapons of the ninjas and everything and then you get the whole training scene you know the final test of you know franco nero fighting all these red ninjas and then fighting shokasugi he you know he passes and his sensei you know well you're a ninja now and everything and the ending was cool where you know he goes to this office building where the bad guys are and he starts taking them out and then they get they catch up to him, and he has the final battle with Shokasugi's character, and they fight in this like cockfighting pit, like they fight in there, and you know he defeats him, and then you know Shokasugi takes his mask off, and he's like, you know, I want you to, you know, you beat me, but I want you to, you know, defeat me with honor. So he beheads him, and which traditionally that's like what ninjas would do, you know, they would on they would still honor each other. You know, and then that's it. You know, he saves the day and there you go. So, I mean, you know, this movie still, you know, almost 40 years later is fun. And Shokasugi 
was obviously, you know, the star of the film because he would go on to be in not only these movies, but, you know, he would do Nine Deaths of the Ninja, Pray for Death, which is my favorite one outside of, you know, uh, this one, you know, the Ninja Trilogy. Um, then he did uh, Rage of Honor, which is not a ninja movie. It's just a martial arts action film. He did Black Eagle, you know, then it did a couple other movies and then he just kind of disappeared. You know, but he was also in the Master TV show, which was about ninjas with um, Lee Van Cleef was in that. Um, you know, and, and a lot of the, the posters and the video game covers and everything, that was all Sho Kasugi. You know, a lot of the ninja posters that came in like Black Belt Magazine back in the day and, and all the different, you know, martial arts magazines and ninja magazines and everything, a lot of those pictures from those magazines was Sho Kasugi. You know, um, in Three Ninjas, the one poster that the boys have in their room where he's holding two swords like this, that's Sho Kasugi in that picture. Um, there's one where he's like doing a jumping kick like that, that's him. Like, you know, his face was everywhere for quite a while. And it's, it's kind of a shame that he got stereotyped as the ninja dude because... You know, again, I think he had charisma. I think he had talent, especially in the martial arts department. And I think he could have made a lot more movies. Or maybe he just didn't want to do it anymore. Maybe he made enough money or, you know, didn't want to overexpose himself. I don't really know the story there. Um, but the ones that he did make, I do enjoy. You know, and I do enjoy this one. And again, I know people say, oh, it's a, you know, cheese ball action film. And it's, you know, whatever. I don't, I don't give a shit. But I do like this movie, and I think it's fun. And it was successful because we got, you know, two sequels. And then, you know, they did the American... The same company did the American Ninja Saga. So there you go. Um, obviously, this movie worked. And, of course, there were many imitators and duplicators and, you know, all kinds of stuff. And then you had, you know, Ninja Turtles and Ninja video games and Ninja comic books and, you know... The ninja thing worked in the 80s. That was like the big deal, you know, in terms of the martial arts stuff. Was everybody wanted to learn how to be a ninja and, and all that stuff. So, you know, it, it definitely helped. You know, it helped that stuff become popular, which is cool. But yeah, so, you know, and I like the cast. You know, I like Shokasugi. I like Franco Nero. Uh, one of the bad guys has a hook. Like, that was pretty cool to see. Um, you know, I do think this is a fun one. You know, I do enjoy Enter the Ninja quite a bit. Again, it's not my favorite of the franchise. That would be part two. The next one I'm going to review, obviously. But this one is fun. You know, I do think it's fun. The music is really cool, too. I really like the score. Um, actually, it doesn't say who did the music on the back here. That's kind of weird because usually it will say that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Did the second one? Of course, the second one and the third one tell you it. Actually, the third one does not tell you who did the music. Okay, so, I don't know. Usually they put, like, who does the music on the back of the Blu-ray. I don't know. Anyway, but the music is really cool, you know. It's like, it's... That's like the main theme of the movie. But in the beginning, when you see Shokasugi demonstrating everything, it's got, like, this nice drum thing. You know, really cool music. I don't know if they ever released the soundtrack, but I would love to, to get a copy of it if it is out there. You know, it's pretty cool. But yeah, you know, at the end of the day, this I think this movie's very fun. It's solid, you know, and it's just very enjoyable. Again, I had not seen this movie in quite a while, in, in, in many years. And it was fun to put this in and watch it again. You know, it's still, I think, held up. It was still fun, still an enjoyable action film at the end of the day. So there you go. So I hope that you guys enjoyed my review of Enter the Ninja. And next I will be reviewing the first sequel and I think the best one, Revenge of the Ninja. So until then, as always, thank you guys for watching. Take care and I'll talk to you guys later. See you.